Command Sergeant Major Eric Oakes. Welcome to the United States Army Training Center in Fort Jackson for the retirement review of one soldier and the graduation of companies A, B, C, D, and E from the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Kia Humphrey. Good morning. I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful. Grateful for this beautiful day, grateful for this great occasion. We are grateful for every new soldier who's standing on the field beginning this new journey. And God, we're even grateful for our retiree who's going on to a new chapter in his life. We ask your blessing upon the ceremony, upon the remainder of this day. We ask for traveling grace and mercy over our soldiers and their families as they depart from this place. We thank you for all things, and it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the career of one lifelong soldier and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of the soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to your right are the 282nd Army Band, accompanied by members of the 208th Army Reserve Band under the command of CW3 Kevin Peck. Graduating soldiers from companies A, B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from companies C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Philip Turner, who serves as the executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Forrester. On his left is Command Sergeant Major James Cox, the battalion's non-commissioned officer, senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. 
The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed force veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of a lifelong soldier. All soldiers begin, begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been many changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that this soldier was first introduced to the Army values. It is where he learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 33 years ago, this soldier took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute this great soldier as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States is presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation, nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment dedication and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for your happiness and su success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army is also presented to those retiring today and to the spouses of today's retirees. The Chief of Staff of the United States Army sends the following certificate. It reads, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from active status, with the United States Army, you have earned our grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. At this time, 
Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize our retiree for his service to the United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Qutabala Tobin, having served honorably for 33 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 September 2023. Lieutenant Colonel Qutabala entered active duty in Columbia, South Carolina, and will reside in Columbia, South Carolina upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement is becoming a warrant officer. The nation salutes Tobin. Qutabala, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army, retired. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our retiree and his family. Although newly retired, he will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle for 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Drill Sergeant DiOrio, will recite the Drill Sergeant Creed. We ask that all drill sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Forrester and Command Sergeant Major Cox will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle is Drill Sergeant Andrew DiOrio from Ames, Iowa. The soldier leader, of this, uh, soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private Tanner Holbert from Pueblo, Colorado. The 
The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is PFC Daniel Smith from Jackson, Mississippi. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Alan Beckett from Fayetteville, North Carolina. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Isaac Skaggs from Canby, Indiana. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Garrett Wilson from Carson City, Nevada. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Nicholas Ferrioli from Forked River, New Jersey. The soldier leader of the cycle for, De for Delta Company is Private Joseph Resch from Avon, Ohio. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is PFC Joshua Loving from Palmyra, Virginia. The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is PFC Braden McNabney from Dixon, Tennessee. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is PFC Jacob Stonerup from Pember Pemberville, Ohio. The NCO of the cycle is Sergeant Jency Warren from Tampa, Florida. The soldier of the cycle is Specialist Justice Pugh from Birmingham, Alabama. The civilian of the cycle is Miss Sally Wallace from Huntersville, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Forrester. Well, uh, good morning and welcome back to steamy Fort Jackson today. Brigadier General Kelly, Command Sergeant Major Oaks and Mrs. Oaks, Colonel Hutton, Command Sergeant Major Blyler, Sergeant Major Retired McClary, Mrs. McClary, families, friends, and supporters of 339, the Bar Nothing Battalion. Thank you for attending today's graduation. And let me give a special thank you to the 282nd Army Band. Thank you for the pride and professionalism you bring to events like this. For over 247 years, the United States has remained a free nation because of men and women willing and able to answer the nation's call. These are veterans like Lieutenant Colonel Tobin, our honored retiree this morning who served in numerous assignments over 33 years of service, including as the executive officer of this battalion. To all our veterans, past and present soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen here today, we thank you for your service and invite you to please stand, if able, to be recognized. The heart and soul of the effort to produce the 713 bar nothing soldiers on the field before you is our drill sergeants. Every day for the past 10 weeks, our drill sergeants have trained and inspired to produce soldiers with the discipline, fitness, and lethality needed for the crucible of ground combat. Theirs is a tough mission, but one that must not fail. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause to honor the tireless work of our drill sergeants. <laughs> 
Since 1973, the United States has relied only on volunteers to fill the military ranks. However, not everyone can serve. In fact, less than one in four of military age are physically, mentally, and morally eligible. Less than one in 10 are willing to serve. And ultimately, only one in 100, that's 1%, ever does. Ladies and gentlemen, standing on the field today is that 1%. The soldiers in front of you represent all of this great nation, from sea to shining sea. 44 of the 50 states and three U.S. territories are represented. They come from big cities like New York, Los Angeles, or Chicago, and small towns like Jasper, Georgia, Idaho City, Idaho, and Brattleboro, Vermont. 18 countries and five continents are represented in this formation. Places like Brazil, Germany, Nigeria, Togo, Mongolia, Cuba, and South Korea. Of the 713 soldiers in front of you, the youngest is 17, and the oldest is 43. Two hundred and eighty five of the soldiers on the field have a parent who has served, and one hundred and thirteen are parents themselves. Seventy two hold an associate's degree, forty six a bachelor's degree, and ten of them hold master's degree. One is a prior service Marine, non-commissioned officer. And another holds an advanced degree in percussion and is heading up to the band at West Point. All of them raised their hands and volunteered. Some volunteered because of family tradition, some seeking challenges, some seeking a better life, some simply to serve. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter why they joined. What matters is that they did. The Army, and as you just heard, the drill sergeant motto is, this will defend. The this has meant different assignments for the Army across its 248-year history. To fight for American independence, to free and enslave people, to defeat fascism, push back communism, or counterterrorism. And none of us knows what sort of challenges may await the soldiers in front of you. But one thing we do know, that the Army will always defend the liberty of these United States. This is the sacred obligation of the American soldiers in front of you to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Their solemn pledge to you, the American people, is that they will never falter, never quit, and never give up. To the soldiers of 339, 10 weeks ago, you arrived at Fort Jackson as individuals, but you leave today as members of the Army team. On behalf of the leaders and cadre of 339, congratulations. You are American soldiers. Whether you serve two years, 20 years, or 40 years, take pride in the uniform you now wear and never forget your responsibility to maintain the trust of the American people whom you serve. Good luck to you all, and I look forward to seeing you out there. AAAO, strike strong, we make American soldiers, and victory.
Today's soldier is above all a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in the Army values, and determined to destroy the enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers' Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms fought so arduously for, for by all who all have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you have set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as PFC McNabney presents a certificate of appreciation to the retiree and leads the soldier standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed. Please be seated. In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of the awardees may meet their soldiers under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldiers on the field once instructed by the narrator. The 39th Infantry Regiment was organized at Camp Syracuse, New York on 1 June 1917 by transfer of veteran troops from the 30th Infantry Regiment. In December, the 39th was assigned to the 4th Infantry Division and in the spring of 1918 sailed for France as part of the American Expeditionary Force in World War I. The regiment fought with such valor and distinction during this war that it earned its famous nickname, Fighting Falcons. During World War II, the regiment fought as part of the 9th Infantry Division. The Fighting Falcons of the 39th became the first United States combat troops to set foot on foreign soil when they stormed the beaches of Algiers in 1942. 
During fighting in Sicily, Italy, the regiment came under the command of the legendary Colonel Harry A. Patty Flint, who gave the regiment its triple A bar nothing slogan. Anything, anywhere, anytime, bar nothing. The regiment took great pride in the triple AO slogan, displaying it on their helmets and vehicles, even in combat. When questioned about the soundness of the practice, Colonel Flint confidently declared, the enemy who sees our regiment in combat, if they live through the battle, will know to run the next time they see us coming. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Philip Turner and the battalion staff. The 202nd Army Band is commanded by CW3 Kevin Peck. The drum major is Sergeant First Class Michael Bolton. Company A is commanded by Captain Max Braganza. <laughs> <laughs> 